there. Okay, cool. Well, let me try. Go for it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this video explains uh, the overview of the art elements, which are the basic building blocks of all art. And it's good to have an overview. Um, and also, too, I've included some examples in here so you can see uh, what the actual um, elements look like in an artwork. Um, we can go on and on about individual elements, but this is primarily an overview so you know where we're going with some of the individual elements when we discuss those in separate videos. And uh, as you can see on the screen, I'm the art teacher, Eric Henty. Uh, the channel is The Art Bug That Bites. And the goal of this channel is to further the understanding of art and improvement of art skills so viewers can create their own in original artwork if you choose to. Um, or you may want to or you may want to learn art because it's fun and it's stress relieving, interesting, etc. etc. There's so many benefits of learning how to draw and paint. However, I'm not going to go into all of them here. So let's take a look at some specific um, let's take a look at uh, understanding and the proper use of the art elements. Now these, as I said before, they're the building blocks of art and the goal of this video is to understand and just to be you're not going to be able to use all of them at this point, I don't think, unless you're more advanced. However, this does give you a good overview, like I mentioned. We have lines, shapes, color, value, which are uh, the whole scale of light to dark colors. Form, which are the creation of a three-dimensional illusion in art. Uh, texture, which is uh, another um, art element where something looks like the surface is rough or super smooth. And that can be an actual texture of the artwork or it can be the illusion of that. And the creation of space is the last one. And there's six or seven ways to create space in an artwork where you feel as though you're actually looking into a picture. We've all seen this before. It looks like, say for an example, a tree is way in the background and then you have trees and maybe people in the foreground in front of the trees. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. This is a painting by Wassily Kandinsky. Uh, he originally was from Russia. And uh, right away we get into something called line. And you see some examples here of thick and thin lines. This one here, it's curvy as well. It's thick here. And you can see as it curves down, um, it becomes thinner and thins out completely at the end. Uh, we have uh, another example of a completely straight line here. Here's some lines here that uh, are angled and overlapping. And there's millions of ways to use lines, but this just gives you a uh, brief introduction. Here's a curved one here. Okay, so that's line. Let's take a look at shapes. We're all pretty much familiar with shapes. You have circles. So here's a circle he uses. He has an inner and an outer one. Uh, he has a triangle here. 
Um, here, if you look at here, here's a rectangle, which um, you'll see in here as well. There's several different sizes of rectangles. And from here, we also can move over to the next art element of value, which are colors that go from lighter to darker. And if we look right in here, you can see how it goes from lighter to darker and gives a very interesting effect to the artwork here. We can move on to texture. And the purple here looks rough. Uh, is it actually rough to the touch? Well, we don't know that because we're not running our finger along the artwork, uh, which we shouldn't do unless it's ours. Um, but if it is ours, we could do that or take a closer look at, say, a painting and we could tell. And then we have color. And this particular artist used many colors here, as you can see. And uh, we can ask ourselves, well, what element, art element, is not in this painting? And we could see that there's not a lot of form in this painting, which are three-dimensional images. Um, you know, we don't see cubes. Uh, the closest we come to it is in here, or it starts to look a little three-dimensional. Um, but we don't really see cubes or pyramids or anything of that nature. We do have space, however. Um, here, space, the sense of space is created by overlapping shapes. So this is a pretty good example of the art elements and how he uses them in this artwork to create a, a very interesting and actually very well-known and famous piece of art. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Okay, let's take, take a look at this one. We have line again. And here a line is created when there are two different colors that are side by side. Um, and we see this pretty much all throughout this artwork as we have colors that are side by side. They create lines. Um, and let's take a look at form in this one. There are distinct forms here. Um, there weren't in the other video. But right here, we have a, a cylinder, which um, a cylinder in real life looks like a barrel or a tower. Those are cylindrical forms. Um, and this one looks like it's turned at an angle. And it's a, uh, it, it does look 3D. Okay, and here's another one over here. This one looks like a shorter barrel turned to the side. And the shading here is what makes this illusion possible, uh, which we'll go into in other videos. Space. Uh, the whole art element of space is very effective here. He has this very narrow cylinder um, looks like it's suspended in space in front of the rest of the painting here. Uh, actually this form here also looks like it's suspended in space in front of the work and uh, this one too. So we have three of these forms that look like they're suspended in space as if we could put our hand into the painting, we could actually reach behind these forms. Um, so that's, uh, that's how that space is created. Um, there's, there's other ways he's done it here too, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Okay, let's take a look at value here. We have light to dark. And this actually gives us the sensation that this 
uh, piece of the painting here is kind of curved, where the lighter part is closer to us and the darker part is further away. And he does that in quite a few other areas of the artwork as well, of this painting. And he uses this very effectively to give it a three-dimensional look to it as if these uh, parts of the painting are approaching forms. Not complete forms, but they're approaching um, a form. Shapes, uh, we have, say here, a rectangular shape. This pink patch is a rectangular shape. Let's take a look at colors. Uh, he has blue and red in this painting are dominant colors. You know, they tend to um, stick out the most, or we observe them the most when we look at this artwork. And there's texture also. You know, if we look at this red area here, this looks like it could be bumpy or rough. And the same with this pink area here. Uh, other areas of the artwork, too. There's actually the appearance of texture in quite a few areas. So this is a very good example of the art elements. Okay, let's move on. Uh, to another illustration of the art elements as we reference well-known artist works. I find this extremely helpful in my understanding of these elements and because you actually get to see them uh, and how effective they are. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at line. This artist's name is Paul Clay, sometimes pronounced Paul Klee. He's from Switzerland. And a line is actually a point that is moving from place to place, or that has two endpoints that are uh, attached by a line in the middle. And he uses different types of lines in his artwork. You know, we can compare this one here on the left to this one here on the right. And we can see very distinctly these very thick lines here, very dark and bold. And sometimes thicker, sometimes thinner. Um, but overall, they're pretty, you know, they're relatively the same thickness. Um, but the, the movement of these lines creates the interest and along with the colors he uses. Now this artwork on the right has a lot of very fine lines that he's chosen to use to create the sense of a town. Uh, part of the town perhaps is up on a hill with more hills in the background. Uh, again, he's varied the colors um, that work with these lines um, that also do where the lines connect, they create shapes as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. There's lines and here's the use of shape. Uh, we all already took a look at uh, Kandinsky. Um, this is another one of his work where he uses these different kind of shapes. Uh, again, circles, triangles. Here you see squares and you see um, some elongated um, rectangles. Um, he was very into music as well and many people when they look at his artworks, have been able to see the connection between his artwork itself and music composition. So if we take a look at Mondrian over here on the right, Mondrian started out creating uh, 
artwork with a lot of nature, trees and houses. And as he developed as an artist, he began to move into creating more of these geometrical shapes. And he actually believed that with these geometrical shapes, that people use this artwork or these, this type of design in their houses, it would actually very positively influence their lives. Um, here he used was mostly uh, squares and rectangles of different colors. And moving on, we see the uh, use of value in a few different artworks. Uh, this one by Picasso, values from light to dark. He creates a uh, um, this portrait of a woman here uh, with her child. And the folds in the clothing are created by different values of this kind of brown he uses. And the painting on the right is done by Andrew Wyeth and these darks and lights are um, very effectively used. Um, maybe a little more gradually here than in uh, Picasso's work, but it's called Christina's World, and this this painting is, is worth a whole discussion and video on its own, so I'm not going to go too far into it right now. But the background of this artwork is pretty fascinating. Um, but this, as she's looking up here, we can see this lighter patch up here, this, the light of the sky. And this building all have different values, which also draw our eye into it. Moving on, use of form, or three, three dimensions. Artist, his name is Legere, and... Here he uses cylinders, spheres, and cubes to create the illusion of three dimensions. If we take a look at this woman's face, this is definitely a sphere. Uh, this man's face here also. Uh, we could see that uh, um, this uh, area here looks like a table, is uh, a cube or a cubish type shape. And uh, the body parts are also very geometrical and are made up of geometrical shapes too. Move on to the use of color. And here we're looking at uh, an artist, his name Chagall. I did not include a Matisse here. Um, but this particular artist often uses a lot of color in his artwork. And, um, whoop, excuse me. And here he chooses to use many colors to add to the effect here. Now, if we examine this artwork, it's definitely, uh, it's like a, a poem of romance between these two figures here on the right with the town in the back and the beautifully lit trees and um, it's either a sun coming up or a sun going down and we could only guess that you know these colors are um, also illustrating their love and affection for each other so it definitely adds to the whole sense of the artwork. Okay, use of space. Now these, there are many, many examples of the use of space in artwork. And it's used to create an illusion. And in this particular artwork here, and I'll, I'll expand it just for sense of explanation. Um, we can see that um, the way Van Gogh has painted this, we have a figure here in front, 
and yet he is silhouetted by this uh, the countryside that's around him and we get the feeling that of course he's much larger in the front his shadow is falling here with the light behind him but we also get the sense that this town is in the distance um, and this is also accomplished by this uh, there's a great contrast of colors here in the front and as you move to the back of this painting the colors are much more muted and mild that also gives us this feeling of distance uh, in, a, in another video we'll go completely into the creation of depth in your artwork so that's that's how he does it there in that one and in this particular one this is Salvador Dali uh, and he created many sort of realistic or dream type artworks and here we have a figure in front who's supported by these crutches and this figure is very stark against the background here and silhouetted against the background again we can see a horizon line here um, if we enlarge this for the sake of the video we could see that uh, we could also see here's a small figure here much smaller than this so we get the feeling of size and also too in the background here there's uh, a very large house almost a castle back here and that looks like a small boat um, so he used a lot of um, different techniques to give us that sense of, of distance here and space and another one is the artist Magritte this is an interesting piece of artwork with this large huge rock floating up above the ocean definite sense of um, a lack of reality here with some real elements mixed in which adds interest to this artwork and if we take a close look at it um, the waves look closer to us than the rock this appears to be floating out over the water and way up at the top there is this castle um, so he's done a very good job in creating this illusion of a floating rock with a castle on top it's a real sense of space okay this is the last example use of texture by an artist called Basquiat and also to Rauschenberg now if you if we take a close look at this particular painting it's very rough across the top he's he's left a lot of paint in different places on this artwork that make it very rough um, this and also to this Rauschenberg at the lower right even looking at it you could tell that um, it also is is very rough along the different different parts of it uh, the drips and you know you just really get a sense that it's a has a very rough type exterior um, let's put that let's put that back for now he, he even has wood and some metal hanging over it and as a little preview for um, we talked about the art elements now we're going to look briefly at art principles which this is going to be a subject of a whole other um, video and these art principles are used to arrange the art elements to make an artwork 
as effective as possible in getting its message and effect across. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you learned something from this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe and leave a like or a comment. And thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. Okay, take care. I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye for now.